clap's not up, coming through, but hey, it's it, we, we see it. Back. Back again, ladies and gentlemen. Another episode of the Snipecast. John, how's it going? Hey, everybody. Like Nick said, welcome, welcome back to the Snipecast. I'm your host, John Snipes Novak, and with me today, my co-host, the gorgeous. Thank you. The lovely. Aw. The attractive. Nick, connect, everybody. John, I don't know if you've noticed. My background's changed a little bit. Yeah, you moved your camera. I, well, not even. I used to be about in the middle of the room with this long, like, fold-up white plastic table. Now yeah. I'm in the corner. I got an L desk. Yep. Yeah. And now my boom arm actually works properly, so, John, I can come all the way back here. My, my roommate, as I was doing your intro, started screaming, yeah, Nick, woo. Thanks, cat. <laughs> Nick said thanks. So, yeah. Uh... This week, we kind of have a little bit of a weird podcast. Not too much happened this week. Um, so we're just going to kind of run through it. But I did play a new game this week. So, oh, yeah. So for my games of the week, first things first, my drink. I'm drinking a raspberry uh, sweet tea today. Mm. Trying to get mm, some organic energy today. That sounds delicious, honestly. It, it, it tastes delicious. I didn't fill it up anymore because I don't want to drink too much of it. I need to get some more water. Because um, as you know, Nick, uh, I yeah. talked about this. Uh, yesterday, He's uh, back. as of yesterday, I'm officially cleared to, uh, to start working out and rebuilding my shoulder and, uh, I'm cleared to go play hockey again because I, uh, busted up my shoulder four months ago. Haven't used it really in four months. So I'm back in action. I'm happy. So I gotta, I gotta make sure I start drinking water before next week. I have a meeting next week, I think Monday, uh, with the uh, physician to teach me and give me some decent workouts I, so I can work my shoulder up. Instead of having to go to PT and having to worry about that mess. Because if you didn't know, workers' comp is a bitch. It really is. Yeah. So, So yeah. Instead of having to worry about PT, they're just going to have me work out and do it myself. So, that's good. So, uh, I introduced a new friend. Uh, or a, Well, not a new friend. A, a couple of my friends to Valorant uh, this week. Uh, I built somebody a PC on Saturday. Or Sunday? Saturday? No, I'm right. Sa- Saturday. Uh, and he had never played Valorant before because his original computer couldn't uh, actually run Valorant. And, I can uh, confirm the receipts. It was Saturday. It was Saturday. So, yeah, uh, it, it was awesome. Uh, I introduced him to Valorant, and then one of my longtime buddies uh, from high school hockey introduced him to Valorant. We had a blast. It was good. I like introducing people to that game because, uh, like, you're pretty garbage off the rip because it's so different, especially like bringing Call of Duty players. Oh from Valorant. yeah, unless you unless you religiously played CS:GO, yeah. it's no. It's a way you, different. You don't game. you don't know what to do because you got to plant your feet. Yep. Oh. Like I, I I was talking to them like throughout like the night and stuff, and like they they were a little down on themselves, but like at the end of the night they were like, I don't want to stop playing because I want to get better, because it feels very satisfying. And, like, that's what I say about Valorant all the time. It's just a satisfying game when you you want to work yourself to get better. So, uh, also started playing Apex this week again uh, for the first time in a long time. Uh, just mostly because the boys are playing it. I don't, I still don't really like the game. Oh, dude, I don't like it at all. It's, it's a very clunky game. It just doesn't, it doesn't feel like a shooter to me. Um, and I don't know how to feel about it. But I hate it. <laughs> I mean, I'm playing with the boys, so, I mean, I'm having fun regardless. So, that's all that matters, so. Um, and then I bought, went out and bought MLB The Show last week on Wednesday, and I didn't play it, uh, till after the pod, so I started playing MLB The Show, my guy's a pitcher, and, uh, he's 19 at the moment, pitching in the big leagues, he's a starting pitcher, um, averaging, like, 10 strikeouts a game right now, so, uh, yeah, I'm on the Indians, cause you know Cleveland bound, uh, yeah. That's all I got for MLB The Show. I I actually enjoy the game. I'm excited for uh, for the new one. I think it's going to be fun, and I'll be able to play it on Xbox, so that'll be even better, in my opinion. But You mean PC? Uh, I don't think it's on PC. Oh. But it's, oh, uh, you're right, because it's now just come. I just that the way you phrased it, I forgot. I completely oh, yeah. forgot that it was PlayStation exclusive, so the way you yeah. said, I'll get a play it on Xbox, I go, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're out there. Yeah, it's no, now yeah, coming yeah. to Xbox. Yeah, MLB yeah. The Show comes, and I get it for free because I have uh, Game Pass. Which has been like a big thing the past couple of weeks, like Game Pass and um, Xbox Live Gold. But I'll put that in as a topic. I'll, I'll write that in as you're uh, as you're talking here about your game. So go right into it. So John, first off, the drink. What drink? It's some, you know, 
some sour face berry G Fuel today. But, John, you ready? Don't tell G Fuel. I'm not using one of their shaker cups, all right? Don't tell them. But look at this shaker cup, John. It's pretty sick. I saw it before the stream. That's dope. Freaking Spidey. Um, The games I've played, you're, you're, I don't think you're ready for this, John. I, I actually don't think I am because I didn't know you were changing it up on me, so. Want to hear the games I've played this week? Yeah. I played League of Legends. Okay. I'm a Wukong main now, John. I've seen that. 70% win rate in comp with 15 games played. It's not bad, dude. It's pretty full. Pretty good. One, you forgot a game that you played this week, but I'll, I'll look past it. It's I not did. Like we, it's not like we started our Pokemon Cage Lock. I was Lock, just thinking about it. Diamond right and Pearl Nose Lock adventure together. Yep. Cage Lock. Me and John have been doing a Cage Lock, you know, off the air. It's we a fun time. Yeah, we're well, rest in peace, my Ivysaur. Rest in peace, John's Whooper and yeah. John's oh. Metatite and John's Curlia. Lots of Pokemon. I've just. I lost that um, when I lose. Off the rip. Oh, man. Uh, Toka oh, Kick. Yeah. But it's been a fun I time. We out there. Key. We're out there playing Pokemon. Yeah. John got a Starmie right as we ended the last session. Yep. Right out, of, right out of an it, egg because it's a randomizer. So it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful thing. But I no, really. Besides, coverage. besides that, all I've played is League this week. I yeah. played a little bit of Tarkov, but I've been playing Wukong like a fucking madman. Yeah, I'm excited to see where my Starmie goes because I mean, like obviously, like I can't. We talked about this yesterday off air, but uh, like I can't, I can't learn any moves on Starmie. But I might be able to EV the shit out of him. To the point where he's just a defensive beast, and when I get served, I mean, you'll be, all right. say you'll be chilling. My Lapras is my baby. Yeah, facts. I Lapras is just an age old Pokemon that's just great. Once they have kid, has it always Lapras. been water and ice type? Yeah, yeah, it's just such good typing. Because like, I don't know, I, great stab type. water pulse and ice shard. Oh, yeah, it's just great. Nick, fun fact of the week. Oh, John, the fun fact of the that. week. I kept it on brand, baby. Oh, I didn't even nice. mean for us to start like this conversation and go into this because our fun fact is Pokemon related, John. Nice, perfect. Did you know? Do you remember Pokemon Gold and Silver? I did the Actually, the sequels? The the sequels to oh my god, really? Yeah. Cool. The sequels to you know red and red and blue and yellow, right? Yeah. Well, they were meant to be the last game. Wow. In the line of Pokemon games. Good thing the Pokemon not... Company did not uh, anticipate that the sequels would perform well, and their plan was to make these games, and that would be the end of Pokemon. And however, due to its rapid success, they decided to carry on, and here we are in 2021 waiting for Diamond and Pearl remakes. Yep, and then uh, 2022 Arceus. I'm excited. That's the Pokemon fact of the day. Nick, our first topic, I, I've been told off of air that you're just not even going to entertain this. So, like, that's you, cool. I'm going to give, like, my little, like, two-piece before you just blare out fuck no in all caps bolded. I'm not, uh, yeah, okay, yeah. So, Edelman retired this week. Yep. And, uh, like, normally when a player, like, a football player retires, like, there's always, like, like, a lot of teammates are always, like, behind them, right? Like, oh, it was great playing with him and this and that. But there's always, like, those negative comments about the players, right, like, that retire. You, 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 it doesn't matter who it is, right? There's always something negative that somebody has to say about the player that retired. This week, I, I think this is, like, the first time that I've heard of a NFL player retiring and that I could really find that overall just seemed like a great person. In everybody's oh, good eyes. dude. He's, he's a great good locker room guy. Dude. Um, it, like it, that that I think is cool. Um, but that's not my argument. Uh, here. So obviously the Hall of Fame talk is something that comes up immediately after a player that has some sort of high stature comes up and retires. Obviously the Hall of Fame talk is the first thing that comes into conversation. Normally before uh the the talks about how great of a how great of a person he is or whatever, it's always straight to the Hall of Fame, right? There's a lot of people saying that Edelman will never, ever make it to the Hall of Fame. And it seems like you're you're part of that that you're part of that. And I, I, I'm yeah. not I'm not here saying that he's a first ballot or a second ballot Hall of Famer. I think he could be a third uh you know, if in thirty years could end up in the Hall of Fame. Who knows where that would take us, right? How far down the line that would take us and 
uh, where that would put him in his retiring class or in his rookie class, right? But I, I, I think there's some key notes, right, that we have to take from Edelman's, I, I, I would say, success, right? Like, he, he played on a team uh, that was pretty goddamn garbage uh, all year. I mean, really, it was Tom Brady and him and maybe a little bit of defense, but in the Super Bowl, not even, right? Like, it was just a garbage Super Bowl. It was a garbage overall showing from both teams. It was just an absolute just shit show of a Super Bowl. It was honestly more boring than watching this year's Super Bowl. Oh, it was terrible, It was, it was bro. absolutely garbage. It looked so like a disappointing. bunch of high school players. But like, with how hot the Rams were going into that, it yep. was so disappointing. It was very disappointing. It, it was definitely the most disappointing Super Bowl uh, in, in, like, my, my like, recent looking into things, right? But Edelman stu- uh, stepped up, and he decided that he was going to be the wide receiver for the team that year. And uh, realistically, he was the only one targeted uh, really all season and especially the Super Bowl. Um, and and I, I think because of like that success and him getting MVP, which was for a great reason because nobody really looked that good in that game, right? So like obviously there was really only one other person that they could have picked uh, to be MVP for that Super Bowl. But I, I think Edelman could be a Hall of Famer, uh, and I really can't. I, I really can't say that he's going to be a first or second ballot Hall of Fame, right? I, I don't think that's going to happen, not even close, right? But I do think somewhere down the line, I think there is room in the Hall of Fame for Edelman. Uh, he was a tough player, and players have come out and said that he was the hardest working player that they've ever met. Um, so, I don't know. I, I think because of like his attributes and what he did in that Super Bowl and uh, really helped the team out there, I don't think that Super Bowl really happens without Edelman. They're wide receiving core that year was pretty garbage uh I, I think he should be in the hall of fame talk but not not for a not for a long while Mr. let's John. say you. he's had maybe three good seasons in sure. his whole entire career sure. he's had three seasons he's never made a pro bowl yep. and i think winning super bowls is cool but i don't yep. think that it holds as much stature in in like hall of fame talk as a sport like basketball would be where because there's there's 12 people on the roster you know there's your 52 people on the roster yeah he had that super bowl mvp but i mean he had three seasons in his 11 year career where he had over a thousand yards barely has ever gotten over a thousand yeah i think he's a good he had a good nfl career yep not not taking i don't think he had a hall of fame nfl career okay i i you know, and maybe maybe he definitely maybe he won't be, and like that's cool. And I get both sides of like the argument, right? I mean, it's pretty hard to put somebody in there that really hadn't had that great of a career. But I don't know. There's just there's so many players that enter the Hall of Fame that you're just like, wow, well, okay, maybe. Um, and I don't know. I think I, I would have to do some research to see like some of like the worst Hall of Famers that are in right now, uh, that definitely shouldn't be there. Um, but. Yeah, I think maybe maybe in the future, but maybe not. We'll see. So, but Edelman, regardless, uh, you had a great you had a great career, and uh, the 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 Patriots organization and New England it, themselves loved you. So uh, it's hard to see you go out, but uh, you know, hey, off to bigger and better things. So, Nick, we're moving on to something it's that I that I called a duty time, John. <laughs> Nick. On this podcast, I would say I'm frequently wrong about just about everything. Yeah, no, you're terrible at making predictions. I'm awful at it. Um, with that comes the awful predictions that I made uh, for the, uh, the tournament this weekend. But I did make something correct, and I'll get there after we talk about the tournament, because I was freaking ecstatic. So the tournament this weekend, I... I I don't think anybody was right about, so that that's my defense here. Um, I had, I'm going to put it up here on the screen. This was mine, and I think, like, the only differences that we had uh, was NYSL. You, you had losing to Empire, and then obviously FaZe losing to Optic, but pretty much down the road was just about the same. I, I texted you day one, and I said, my bracket's in shambles. I knew for a fact I was done. I, I, you definitely beat me. I would like, I would have to look and see, but there's no way I, uh, I, I beat. No, you. not not That's a right. shot, bro. You had op, you had optic and rocker in the finals. Yeah, which by the way, rocker did beat optic, and I did predict that just in winners finals, not in, um, yeah, not not in losers. Um, 
Yeah, it was just a crazy weekend. Hundred Thieves played pretty good this uh, this weekend. Um, they're they're kind of going through a honeymoon phase. This was their first weekend as a team uh, after a, after dropping Slasher. So like that happened just after we made the podcast last week. That's yep. why we didn't talk about it. Um, so they played pretty good this weekend. Phase had a great weekend too, and Ultra just fell short on a whole new level. I mean, they felt like Phase, right? Like. They really did. I mean, like that. That's. I mean, yeah. Because Ultra came in, obviously. That that mean phase, cakewalked their way into the finals. Yeah. And then Ultra had a day of just grinding through the losers bracket and had that momentum and that like, just you know, phase is just sitting there, probably just doing scrims against each other, warming up all day. Yeah. As Ultra has gone, you know, through the through the pits, John. So. I don't think the problem stems for from like the days that they played. Obviously, like day one, phase didn't play, but they won day two, right? So like that didn't matter. Yeah, no, no. I'm just saying. But, like I don't. Every I don't. Day, phase. Every day except for day one, everybody played it once. Yeah. So like that, except for Sunday, which is my issue with this whole thing, and I'm not even that big of a phase fan, but like, you you can't you can't have. A, a loser's bracket, which is double elim, right? But only have a single elimination in the finals. That doesn't yeah, make sense. It, it rewards you for losing. It like, really does. And, and Ultra Ultra played earlier that day, too. Like, they played just before that match. So they were already hot because they had a uh, loser's bracket finals. Uh, it, it, and, and then FaZe goes in and, like... Face goes in a little bit cold and, and goes down early and then have to battle back and take it to a map five. I, I just, I think, I think if it was double elimination, Face wins. Face would have won. I think so. Definitely. Face started Definitely. heating up at the end. I, I don't think Ultra wins. Now, Face should have just won the series, right? Like, sure, yeah. that's an argument. But like, potato. But like, like, you have to, you have to make it somewhat even i know it's very difficult but like and i guess like the flip side of that right is an ultra played three would be playing three series and like that can cause fatigue but then just have losers finals that same day right i mean because both hey, teams played i think we said so many times on this show that we should run the cdl i think so Vondi, i think check. i think that's actually a good segue into something that I called last week. And I texted you yesterday calling myself Prometheus. Um, I predicted last week on the podcast it that did. CDL would go to, should and would go to land league at the end of the season. There's too many players complaining about no land. There's too many new players who haven't proved themselves on land, and that pisses off the older players. And to be honest with you, Call of Duty servers just aren't there yet to have an actual league online. Yes. So I predicted last week that the end of next season and champs would be on land. And yesterday, Nick, I got the news. Optic got tweeted out. We're back to land with the boys in the picture. And then I saw, I think I saw Mutineers post, and I think I saw Empires post. And then I think FaZe was a little bit later in the night. Post about land. Finally today. Call of Duty comes out, and this is the exact tweet from them, saying in coordination, by the way, in quotes from the Call of Duty League, in coordination with our teams, we are happy to announce Call of Duty League plans for teams to return to land play at select events after this season. More details to come. My key word there is select events. I have a feeling that the land, that the land league will not be a land league. It's going to be the probably just the finals. Like I said last week, just the finals of uh season three and then champs this is huge because this plays to phases favor um because they have some veterans on their team this this pays obviously i tell you everybody but simp is a vet right simp is the only one that busted new in the scene i mean our city is a bazy and sell sell your all optic empire 
all three of those liners. teams, sub uh, well, they, well, they, Clay. they have some rookies, but Clay's the only one who's who's. Uh, yeah, ahead. but you're putting Clay on Lamb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Scary, obviously. Yeah, yeah. like they, let, let's not let's not Baraka. change this into into Clay slander. That's not my my point there. I was just saying he's got. Some yeah, he signed a jewel for us once. Up. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. But he's got he's got to fight through some adversity with these new players. So uh, I mean, not that he's not going to do it. I'm sure he will. He's he's. So, I I think this could change the league. Ultra's going to have to go huge because they have three rookies and then Bants. Uh, 100 Thieves is like two out of the four players are rookies. Um, a lot of teams have some rookies on them uh, on their teams that haven't yet fought through the adversity of LAN. I, this could flip the this past season ending here uh, really on its head, I think. I think we, we th- we're going to see much of what we saw at the start of the season this year where we're going to see FaZe, Empire, and Optic just running through teams because sh- they have the vets, they, they're they used to LAN. Uh, I, I think I see FaZe and Empire being the ones to, to pull it out, I think. Um, but, yeah, this is going to be great. I'm excited. I'm happy that I predicted something right for once on the show. It's huge. Uh, for some reason, I can't hear a claps today, Nick. Nope, still nothing. <laughs> clap, 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 okay, there clap, we clap. go. Uh, and then obviously we had a uh, trade this week. Uh, Temp goes to Paris Legion, uh, or from uh, I think I think I have hundred T, but I'm pretty sure he actually came from NYSL, and I just didn't change it when I actually looked it up. So I think he came from NYSL. Temp's had a pretty low season so far, so yeah, we'll he- see. He's I, right. but Paris Legion probably could just take anybody and make their team better. So, <laughs> <laughs> was that mean? I think so. But no, they're garbage, they're really bro. Bad. I think they said they were four and eight so far this season. That's not including like the bracket play like this. So, that's pretty bad. That's not good. That's yeah, really I'll, I'll bring up the receipts. Let me get to the COD League. I'll look at the points. We can roast Paris Legion a little bit. Just a, just a just a few times, right? Yeah, because like. My voice is yeah. cracking a lot today. Oh, John's finally hitting people, you guys. Oh, man. Okay, here we go. CDL standings. Yep. So, Paris Legion is actually not last, John. What? Who's last? They're tied for 10th. Wait, can I guess who's last? Yeah. Gorillas. No, they're 8th. Hunter T? No, there's, they're, Hunter T's 6th, bro. Oh, Chill. that's right. I don't know. The London Royal Ravens, John. They are two and ten with thirty cod points. To put this in perspective, they're at thirty cod points, one hundred and twenty-five. So what you're telling me here is the two European teams are last. No, well, ro- well, kind of. London Royal Ravens are twelfth, and then Paris and Seattle are both tied at ten. So there's no eleven right now. And obviously, like that's like uh, Ultra's Canada, but they all have your Euro- they're all European players, so I guess I'm excluding them. But that's pretty bad. Dude. And Minnesota's basically Focus. Canada, so. Focus, thank you. Yeah, right. But Ultra jumped, bro. I, I, let me see. Let me look at their. Let me try to find a lap before the majors CDL standings. So they're in fifth right now. Now, so let's see where they were at before this major. Let me see if I can scroll back. To the pre the pre tournament CDL standings. That's brackets. These are brackets. People like it. brackets. Stop. Why are they retweeting everything? Always. Ugh! Come on! Come on! Come on! I'm fumbling the bag. Give me the pre CDL standings. I don't. Here we go. Okay. Wait. No, that's not it. Oh gosh. Oh gosh. Why do they not have the standings, man? Are we moving on? Can't you, you move on. You, I got this. I, if I find it, I'll come back to it. All right. So our topic three, and Nick Nick was curious to see what this topic was about. And I thought about this long and hard last night uh, in my 30-minute drive on the way home. So we're big Pokemon fans here on the Snipecast. We love Pokemon. I, I, I would put Emerald as my number one favorite game of all time. Respect. Uh, it's, it's just facts, right? Pokemon's my number one. We're big Pokemon people here. 
I was thinking about this last night. So obviously, like we talked about this earlier, like Pokemon Blue, Yellow, and the others, um, Red, so on and so forth, Green, and everything. They were all pre, right? So they were all, they were all the original Gen ones, and then the sequels came out. And Gold and Silver, you you finish. Uh, go ahead. I found it. <laughs> okay, hit me before we get too far. Ultra jump from ninth to fifth. Wow. There you go. That is crazy. Continue. So, when Pokemon Gold and Silver came out, I had it. Uh, my Game Boy Color. Like a normal person, probably my age, or just a bit older, or a little bit younger, right? And I don't know about you, Nick, but that game was pretty difficult when I was, like, a kid, and I was playing the game for the first time, and I didn't really know what I was doing. And even reading the dialect just made it worse sometimes. The game, yeah. the games in past Pokemon were really difficult, I would say. And then, not even, not even. Say, so then you finish the Elite Four, and then you have to go back and fight the Elite Four from the previous game. Well, you, you do all eight gyms and then the Elite Four again. Yeah, you don't fight. You still fight the same Elite Four. It's not the. Previous. No, I think you go on a boat back to Gen One. That's the you go back to Gen One. You don't fight the Elite Four again. Oh, oh, the, you it's the same Elite Four. The, you fight, you, just, you fight okay. the, you fight the gyms, and then you fight Red at level eighty. Oh, right, right, okay, yeah, yeah. So like, and like that took me forever to figure out that I had to do that. Um, and I was thinking last night how dumbed down the new Pokemon games are, and I think I wanted to see something. Uh, uh well, first things first. Do you agree with that? Oh no, Pokemon! Oh yeah, it's just, it's catered towards children. Yeah, but they're like, made very they're made very easy. They have the technology to do so now. You know, gaming has changed from when those Pokemon games came out. I mean, every video game that comes out now, virtually every video game, caters the casual player, caters the kid that doesn't know what he's doing. But but isn't it always hasn't it always been like that? They always cater to the casual player. So what's the difference? They have the technology now, and they're just making it as easy as possible. Okay. I mean, back in the day, obviously, yes, because they just didn't. They were, you know, they're just making video games. Video games didn't have standards. I I was just thinking, because like obviously we're playing the Nuzlocke, right? To like make the game more fun, because like we've played through Diamond and we've played through just about every single. I think I've played every single Pokemon like generation except for well now six and seven. I've I played them all. Um. On the season that... Yeah. And, and like, I, when, when it's like, Sword and Shield came out, and that's what got me back into it, you know, like, actually playing the game again, and now we're playing Nuzlocke to make the game more fun. But, like, I, I, I don't know. I was thinking about how dumbed down the Pokemon games are, and I, I was thinking, like, I want to see Arceus. I mean, it looks like it's a little bit more difficult. It looks like it's got that Breath of the Wild feel. Yeah, I don't think that's going to be as dumbed down as the main, the main story games, because the main story games are just, you know... That is the, the the people they're going for is those like okay. like ten year old kids like that gotcha. is Pokemon's you know but like I feel like Arceus it's like I don't it's definitely not gonna be as handholdy because it's just gonna be an open world game you do you do what you do what you want at your own pace I I I like how we talked about this in a few podcasts past where we like how. Pokemon comes out with a game and they leave it out for a year or two like Sword and Shield like Sword and Shield's been out for what two years now and they drop some DLCs and they make it more fun and they keep longevity of it well this is the first time they've ever done DLCs right I, I was saying that's what they did for Sword and Shield but like oh, okay. there's some sort of like longevity a lot of the time for Pokemon um, maybe yeah. not like but I mean like they were coming out with games like I don't know like really quickly for a while and then they decided to go with like this new model where they like they come out with like I mean like shit what was um what was after Diamond and Pearl? What what was it called? Platinum. Uh, oh, I was thinking of X and Y. Like, X and Y was pretty... It's Black pretty, and white. Or black and white. Black and white's pretty damn difficult. From what I've seen, I haven't played it still. I don't know. I, I, I just want to see Arceus just, like, hit that kind of difficulty. I want to have some sort of longevity in Arceus. I feel know? it. Yeah, I feel it. Cause like I like we're probably gonna bust through Pokemon Diamond, uh, or Diamond and Pearl, even on a Nuzlocke, we'll probably bust through it in like I don't know, like three four weeks, maybe a month, right? Cause like we're gonna try to do it at the same time, 
three, four weeks? Are you kidding me, <laughs> bro? <laughs> dude, that it game it, it takes like it'll take like eight hours to beat that game. Well, on a Nuzlocke, I thought we were playing. Yeah, a bro. It's easy. Okay. Yeah, it's we'll easy. see. Easy. We'll see. You don't lose your starter. You just rampage through everything. I guess that's true. The Pokemon is not hard. There's never been a hard one. I, I figure dude. we maybe get a week out of it. And then after that, like, what do you do with Pokemon, right? So, I don't know. I just, like, I hope Arceus has, like, that two-year longevity without DLCs. Like, I don't know. Like, Skyrim almost. Like, how Skyrim is. Like, Skyrim's... I mean, aside from mods, like, Skyrim, there's so much to do. So, I hope they put something like that into Arceus and that's not just, like, the, the main storyline. Like, even Let's Go. Like, Let's Go Pokemon uh, was... Ha- had some sort of longevity because you could fight all the specialty trainers. Mm-hmm. Like that just added something difficult to the game that made it harder for players like me and you who like the game and like to play the game frequently. So that's why I put that there. I I, I felt like the games have been dumbed down. I hope Arceus isn't like that. I hope it's not as handholdy. I, yeah, I don't think it will. I, I think it's gonna be just like a really fun story driven game. I, hope so. I think it's gonna. I think it's gonna be very similar to Breath of the Wild. And I mean that game came out on Switch release and it's still getting played today. That's true. That's true. People found glitches. Have you seen this? The glitches on Breath of the Wild? Like, I've not done much. I've, I've never played it. I've not I haven't done, either. I, I'm not a Zelda. I've never played a Zelda game. I was just going to say that. I, I, I think the last Zelda I played was on the Game Boy Color. I, the only only reason I know what Zelda is in Zelda and Link is because of Smash. Right. Right. Smash is a good game. We got to play that one time. We got to play that against each other sometime soon. Anthony can join in too. We just have. I don't got guy, space. Right? I don't got space on my switch. I have to uninstall Sword just go, and Shield. Just go get an S. Uh, I did. It didn't, it didn't work, and it told me if it doesn't. If because I bought I bought one from uh, from GameStop, so it's not sure. like I did, like one made for the switch. Sure. And um, it just won't work, and it told me uh, it gave me like a list of things to do, and if that doesn't fix it, the most likely scenario is there's something wrong inside your switch, and you need to repair it, and like. Ugh. What? Yeah. I got my SD wrong, card SSD Microsoft. reader. But, like, I got it, like, it's, like, made, like, it had Mario on the box, John. Oh, it was God. made for the Switch. It was uh, made by Nintendo, John. Maybe, maybe that's the problem. It's a Nintendo product. Uh, yeah, no, I, yeah. I don't know. Maybe maybe we gotta we gotta figure something out. I gotta get Anthony the, uh, the Reggie Drago so we can get, um, uh, whatchamacallit? The big, last big guy. Yeah, big guy. Reggie Gigas. Yeah, Reggie Gigas. It, it was in my mind, and for some reason, I was thinking Regil, Reggie Alecki, but like Gigas form, zip, and zip, I knew that zip, wasn't zip. right. You know what I mean? So, uh, final topic, and we alluded to this earlier. Uh, Xbox Gold is getting some hate around the country. <gasps> Shocker, right? Who could have guessed? And then at the end of this topic, I have, I, I have, does Game Pass kill uh, PS4? So we'll Hopefully, take this. Bro. We'll take this into two steps. So we'll do Xbox Gold and why there's so much hate. Xbox Gold's expensive for absolutely no reason, and the games that they get are pretty damn garbage. Game Pass, on the other hand, you get Xbox Gold, you get EA. It's a little bit more expensive, but you get all the you get all the Bethesda games, you get all the EA games. So like, it's brain dead. I don't know why people are complaining about this. It doesn't really make sense to me at this point. Uh, cause like like. A, what's the point of buying gold when you could just get Game Pass and just pay? Isn't Game Pass only like fifteen? Fifteen bucks, but uh, what's gold? Isn't it? Isn't it eighty dollars a year for gold? Yeah. Well, you have to have gold to. But Game Pass play. is gold. Game Pass is tied into gold now, so like if you have Game Pass, you automatically have Xbox Live. See what the. F- so people are still paying for. Game uh people are still paying for gold and getting the shitty games and pissed off that they're paying less for shitty games. Hello, right? Brain dead. People are complaining yeah, about that. I need I need to log into my Microsoft account and switch my subscription. I'm yeah, paid. please. I've been paying for Xbox Gold since you'll never have to pay for two thousand ten. You'll never have to pay for a Madden a two K the show when the show comes out. You'll never have to pay for any of that shit. Oh, I yeah, the best, and I can can become the best NHL player ever, so I can start dogging John. I just need my boy Wayne Gretzky. He played for that one team. Don't get me started, dude. Do you know? Do you know how much I hate Wayne Gretzky? 
Yeah, you you're 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 like the irrational Tom Brady haters we talk about with the, with Wayne. No, Brady. I I I would consider myself more like the irrational Michael Jordan players or hate uh, lovers. John, you don't get to name the great one if you weren't the great one, all right? He was the great one for his time, but he would be he's garbage. I could lift the puck higher than him. And I suck. Down. God damn it. Hit, hit me. Hit me with all of his records, because I've heard this about a billion times. John, talk to me when your net worth is $200 million. Oh, God. Okay. Okay, <laughs> okay fine. Hold on. We'll, we'll, we'll fight back. Talk. It's not even close. Talk to me when your net worth is $1.6 billion. What are we talking about? Whose net worth is that? Michael Jordan. <laughs> well, Michael Jordan's the most ah, influential. Oh, oh, what does that got to do with anything? Uh, what is what is Michael Jordan got to do with I Mike said, Gretzky? I said, I said Gretzky, Gretzky fans are just like Michael Jordan's fans. Okay. Irrational. What does Jordan's Michael, net worth got to do with anything? But you brought in Gretzky's. Uh, yeah, because you were coming at Gretzky. I'm not coming at Jordan. Who's Jordan's better, got the most better, Michael Jordan or LeBron James? LeBron, but it's got nothing to do with net worth. I mean, LeBron's net worth is probably just the same as Jordan's, but I, I, uh, he signed a billion dollar deal with Nike, so I just, I, I, I find, I find that argument very similar between the two. Uh, like in my opinion, the the best player of all time is either Sidney Crosby or Ovechkin. Um, greatest. I've no, I looked at Gwen, Gwen Gretzky's stats, got confused, and went away. We're going to go to a website, John, and I'm going to tell you. It's going to be Wayne Gretzky. Who this person, who this this website, its name is Britonasa.com. Oh, wait, let me add one more. Mario Lemieux. Okay. that's going to be on the list. You ready for, this is the new segment, Nick butchering these Canadian names. I love this. Because okay. that's that's what I assume when I see a weird name, that they're just a Canadian in the NHL. Okay. Alex Ovenchicken. Ovechkin. Number 10. Uh, I don't even know. Really? He's like at the third most points in the in the. Hey, ever. hey! Don't yell at this yell guy. At sucks. sucks. All right. Um, I can't even pronounce this guy's name. He looks like he played in the '40s, so he probably wasn't good. Wait, but he's wait, there. Try saying his name. Jaquise Planting. Laplante. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. He's pretty good. Gordy uh, number eight. In there. Number eight. Steve e- Eiserman. 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 Uh, funny, Number funny seven. Story. Can I, wait, really quick. Oh yeah, of course. Funny story. So they, so uh, the I can pronounce USA, the next one's name. USA won uh the Olympics the one year, the hockey like place against World Russia. World. Yep. And great, uh, Steve, great for our country. Steve Yzerman was on the team, and uh, they, he went to the White House, and I forget what president it was at the time, but pronounced his name Steve Yzerman. No, <laughs> it's pretty good. That Number seven. Oh, out. get the, get this ad out of my face. Number seven. Terry Salchuk. I don't even know who that is. Uh, many people have called Terry Salchuk the greatest goalie in hockey. Oh, that's why you don't know him. Okay, that's why yeah, you don't know yeah, him. He's a goalie. Yeah. Um, number six. Uh, Jean. Don't, wait, really quick. Don't pay goalies. They're all the fucking same. They number are six. all the same. Okay. Jean Bellevue. Uh, Bellevue. Number five, Maurice Richard. Yep, Maurice Richard Rashad. Number four, Mario Lemieux. Lemieux. Number three. It's actually pronounced Mario, but I'll I'll give it to you. Number three, Bobby Orr. Yes. Number two, Wayne Gretzky. Wow, who's number one? Gordy Howe. Ah, yeah, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. All right, we're going to do a new one. We're we're on Bleacher Report. We're on Bleacher Report now. (laughs) <laughs> All right, John. Number ten. Okay. Number ten is Sidney Crosby. Okay. But number nine, team. Bobby Hull. Bobby Hall. Number eight, Guy Lefeu. Fieri. Guy Fieri. Just joking. Number That's seven, the... Mark Messier. Mark Messier. That that Jean Belouve guy again. Yep. Uh, number five, Maurice Richard. Rocker number Rashad. four, M- Mario. Do you say it was Mario? Mario. Mario. Yep. Number three, Bobby Orr. 
Number two, Wayne Gretzky. Number one, Gordie Howe. Giants How two is this happening two times in a row? There's no All shot. All right, we'll go to the third one. We'll go to the third one. I this is the five grade. He's better than Gordie Howe. This I is hockeywriters.com. Okay, this has to be legit. Num- okay, number five. Let's be nostalgic. Jarmir Jair? Jagermir Jager. He's got, he's got the most points ever in the... In number four, the- John. Our guy, Gordie Howe. Gordie Howe. He's number okay. four. Like number three, Mario. Number two, Bobby Orr. Number one, Wayne Gretzky. Wow. That's it, John. That We're going a, to another one. That was a little bit more realistic than the other two. They, John, that is, was garbage. This is, this is, this is sportshows.net. Okay. okay. <laughs> number 10 okay. is that uh, that guy's name. I just... Jacques Okay. Number, number nine is a new name. We haven't seen this guy yet. Okay. Patrick Roy. Oh, okay. Number eight, Bobby Hall. Okay. Number seven, Terry Sawchuk. Number eight, Guy Lefeu. Okay. Number five, Maurice Richard. Number four, Mario. Mario. Number three, Gordie Howe. Number two, Bobby Orr. Number one, Wayne Gretzky. They put Orr over Howe. Okay. Yeah, I, <sighs> I just... Can, let me make a top ten. Hold on. Maybe I'll just post some bullshit top ten and get a billion views on it. Let's see here. Let's go to a Google Doc here and figure out what I'm going to do. Hey, listen. I'm going with Bleacher Report. I trust those guys. All I'm right. a, I'm a, I'm a, uh, I'm a Gordy Howe stand now. Let's record Gordy Howe broke into the NFL with the Detroit Red Wings in 1946 after 32 professional seasons. 32, 32. Is that? A, I feel like that's a lot, right? Yeah. I don't know if that's a lot in hockey or not. I don't know the average season, but I feel like 32, by, 32 years. By the way, a lot of Gretzky stats. Came from the AHL, like current AHL, but before it was like tied into the NHL, but they were just a bunch of garbage hockey players playing a garbage Dirty. league. John, John, I don't even like Wayne Gretzky anymore. I'm a Gordie Howe fan. This guy That's played, I'm, I'm not even arguing you anymore. Wayne Gretzky sucks. This guy played 32 seasons, John. That's 32 years yeah. playing in the I want to know even how even was. skating alongside his sons, his yep. sons Marty yep. and Mark. Yep, they were good too. Played together in the eighties. They were really good. He started in the forties. They yeah. played together in the eighties. Can, can I get you on on the Mario train? Mario Lemieux played five years in the NHL. Got I cancer. I need Game. a current player to stand. What? I need a current player. You know, someone I need. You know, Sid the Sidney kid. Crosby. I'm not being a Pittsburgh. I would. I'd rather die than see the okay, Penguins succeed. Being, o, being an Ovechkin guy. Who do Who do Capitals. we got? Who Who do we got, John? Do we got anyone? <laughs> do I have any more? Oh, no, no. No, no. Who do we got? Who the Columbus. We? The oh. Columbus Blue Jackets. I mean, shit, dude. Our team's so bad right now. Patty Line is like, I think is the best player on their on our team, but he hasn't been performing so. All right, John, you want me to read you more stuff about our guy, Gordy Howe? Yeah, let's hit, hit me. Mr. Hockey. That's the way, that's his name. His name that's is true. Mr. Hockey. Oh, wait. He spent 25 years in Detroit, John. Nick. That takes a lot to spend 25 years in Detroit. I wouldn't want to spend one year in Detroit. <laughs> yeah. I, like, I'm just going to be honest with you. Who, like, it's not that oh, against the city of Detroit, but who looks at the city of Detroit and says, I love it here? Well, hey. You know and Detroit, Detroit's been getting a lot better, but in the fifties? Well, you know Detroit. Detroit is hockey town. Do you know that? I didn't know that, Jack. Yeah, Detroit's the the heart of Detroit is called Hockey Town. Well, then that makes sense why this it man would want to spend twenty five years in Detroit. But if I'm I'm saying coming from a Ohioan, who who would want to who would want to stay in that that Detroit? I've been to Detroit, John. It's something I, special. As long as you're right in around a hockey town or on the outskirts, like Bell Tire, uh, along the lake and stuff like that, it's a beautiful place. I love it. Bro, they blew up the palace, by the way. they So the palace, the, the Detroit Pistons yeah. stadium, yeah, that thing was in just, it was in a, oh, I don't know how people, you know, it was just not in the best of area. And now they moved their stadium up into the suburbs. They blew that stadium up. It was such a cool video. Literally, you just watch. Oh shit! That's actually sick, yeah. They though. blew it up, John. They they had like they you know like controlled pyrotechnics, and you watch this building collapse. That's dope. Oh, it's so cool. Good for Detroit. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, by the way, Hal also played six seasons in the WHA. Wrapped up his career with forty-one points as a member of the Hatford Whalers. Yep. 
Otherwise, a hundred and one thousand eight hundred nine of his one hundred and eighty five NHL NHL points happened in Detroit. You know, you like know who you of- should, uh, you know who you should wait for. You should wait for next year when the Seattle Kraken are a team. You can make that your team. That's no, a dope I'm Columbus name. Blue. John, I literally live twenty minutes from downtown. That's true. I'm a I'm a Blue Jackets it, fan. It, it is overall better cheering for your home team that you're so close by because then you could just go to game. I mean, maybe not high, maybe not NHL games right now because they're expensive, but <coughs> expensive. You uh, look up, look up. The Magic Man of Hockey. Hold on, John. I'm looking at the Blue Jackets roster. I'm figuring out who I'm going to start standing based off appearances alone. Okay. I, you know, not knowing if these guys are good or not. Um, what's this Starnix's name mean? Okay, so that's our forwards. That's our defense. There's our goalie. You can be a goalie fan. All of this is dope. Yeah, John. Sorry, I can't hear you over my um uh, my Max Doomy. Love. Domi is good. He used to be yeah. really good. I think he's on the end of his career. 5'10", 192 pounds, age 26. Yep. I lied. I'm a Cameron Atkinson guy. I, I, I recognize Cam that Cam Atkinson's name. dope. He's been a part I of I recognize that name. Zach Wierenski is a defenseman. He's oh, he's 31. Ah, oh, I can't. I got to stand someone who's going to be around me forever. All right, I got to find the young gun. Z- Zach Wierenski. Check- How old's he? Zach Dollop, 31. Get out of here. Zach Wierenski. He he's not. He's not a full. Fo- oh, he's not a full. Oh, John, I'm sorry. I'm. I'm standing a forward. I guess a defender. Oh, okay. Eric Robinson, age 25. This is my guy, John. He's gonna be gone next year. Shit. Why? Because it's garbage. Okay, it's Stefan. No, he's 27. You gotta be 25 and under to get my get my uh <laughs> to get your <laughs> get, yeah I, I don't i don't want someone i'm going to grow attached to just for him to retire John. i think you should be a goalie fan if you want to be on if you if you want somebody that you're going to be able to follow forever be their goalies because like columbus has great goalies and they're probably oh, john, no, I found a 20, no, john i found a 21 year old we're fine yeah. alexander texier this year he's 21 john he wherever be, this guy goes i go must be a rookie i guess um Drafted in 2017 by the Columbus Blue Jackets with the second in the second round with the 14th pick, the 45th overall pick. Yeah, he probably played uh, three years in the A, and this is probably his first year in the uh, in the show. That makes sense. Well, John, this is my guy. It's not bad. He um he has four goals this season. Nick, have I showed you my long sleeve? I was gonna do this at the end of the pod. It seems like a little. Oh wait, quickly, think... quickly look up look up the Magic Man of Hockey. Magic. I love how we just went down this random hockey um, yeah. wormhole. Yeah, I, I, I do too. This is what the, we my do. last podcast. I said I wanted to get into hockey. Haven't watched a game two of podcasts hockey yet. Ago. Yep. Oh, there's two podcasts ago. Yeah, because I was in Florida. Oh my gosh, I'm letting the people down, John. Hold on, John. Give me a minute. You said next. It next blue jackets game tomorrow at okay. eight thirty against the. Sky. Tomorrow I am uh, John. I'm gonna come back. Not, not, not probably just, not this one. Just, just do yourself a favor and just watch the one at 7 p.m. on Monday against the Panthers, because at least they have a chance of winning that. Listen, John, I'm gonna come here. Let's see. We're probably gonna record the podcast on a Wednesday. A Wednesday, right? You would think. Yeah. Wednesday or Thursday. That's our typical day. Shit. I'm gonna watch the Tuesday 7 p.m. games. So it's fresh in my mind, John. I'm gonna break down everything I saw from the mind of someone that has never watched a full game of hockey in their life. Okay. I like that. And then bring and, um, all, write all your questions down, and I'll answer them. John, well, before I'm... before you know it, I'm gonna know more about hockey than you. Uh, I. <laughs> Because the, the the apprentice is going to surpass the master, John. I can't, I can't, I can't get behind these these Detroit hockey players. You're throwing down my throat. I know I said I'm a the how guy, but another one, you John. I hate Michigan. Called the magic man, of John. Hockey, John. I hate For Michigan. For a while, when he was in the league, you could ask Alexa who the magic man is, and he, it would come up with Pavel Datsyuk. He's gross. That, 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 that's my favorite player, I think, of all time. But not definitely not the best. But definitely my favorite. He's, he was awesome. He was a cool cool guy to watch. You should watch the silence. They're fun. It's, is he still playing? It's his playing career 1996 to present, John. Yeah, yeah. He's, still, he's not in the NHL anymore. Oh. He's uh he's playing in a Russian league. He went back oh, okay. Home. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah, I, th- I thought this man 
was still playing in the NHL, and I go, that's impressive. 42 yeah, years won old. Won a few cups. Uh, played in, like, I, I think he played in, like, six. Oh. or I think it's, like, four consecutive Stanley Cups. Oh, John. That's pretty great. I think I think what we need to do, either 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 this week or next week, Yeah. we, we got to get you ready for this NBA game you're going through, John. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. I mean, like, I know enough about the NBA to, like, get myself through a game. We, we got to be able so you can match names to faces, John. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I know nobody on the Cavs, like, at all. You, 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 you want to do a quick John Learns the Cavs session with we, Nick? We, can do it next, we got to do it next week. So that way it's all fresh right. in my mind for the week after. Or uh, two right. weeks, yeah. I will I will, I will, will put a player I, I, on the screen, John. I'll give you uh, – this is what we'll do. Without looking, do don't cheat place. on me. <laughs> don't cheat on me, John. I'm going to give you – all of the names of the Cavaliers roster, and I'm going to show you the face. And you're going to have to try to pinpoint. Is Kevin the Love face still is. on the team? Kevin Love is still on the Cleveland Okay, Cavaliers. I got one. I'm good. And then I'm going to then I'm gonna quiz you on um, the Miami Heat, John. Uh, so my, back to my long sleeve. This is probably now my favorite. So you saw the one. Uh, I, I have one identical to this. It's the it's the Star Wars long sleeve that's on Tatooine. It's got Luke yep. Skywalker on the bottom. So this yep. one's sick. You ready? So it's got yep. the Star Wars thing. Same thing. So yep. Oh, he's showing me his butt. I can't read it, John. It says Star City. Do you see the Millennium <laughs> Falcon though? Yeah, I do. Barely, but oh, it's right here. Oh, it's on his Padonka donk. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Star City back here. That's very cool. That's pretty cool, right? It is very cool. I just got this. Uh like this week. I got I got another t shirt. Uh um, that I'll wear next week. I don't have any Star Wars or anything oh, around me or else I'd... I got oh. another t shirt. I'll I'll wear it next week. I, unless my new jerseys come in from Witch Doctor that I'm wearing like the, the baseball jersey because that thing's fucking dope. That I did see those. Those are pretty They're cool. They're sick, right? Witch Doctor's just so I'm cool. a big fan of baseball jerseys. We gotta try to get an interview in soon. Uh, with like somebody from Witch Doctor, we were gonna try to line one up this week, and like plans didn't work out right. But um, maybe next week we'll, we'll. You wanna know the most adorable thing about us, John? What's that? Matching boom arms. Matching boom arms. <laughs> matching boom arms. Yeah, matching boom arms. Matching boom I mean, arms. Like, matching pop filters, filters probably too. Yeah, I, I bet the pop filters are actually the exact same. I think um, the boom arms just a little bit off, but. Uh, no, the boom well, arms the same. No, 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 no. Look right here. Well, that's just because that's the other side. That's what my other side looks like. Oh, really? Oh. My, mine just because look, mine's the side with the screw. Oh, yeah, my my screw broke, so I I I I, I retro. I can't it. I can't really flip this around to show you, John. But I promise you, it's the same boom arm. I got like a washer on this side, so it doesn't break too bad. But it, like it it wasn't holding my uh my mic. Yeah. So I had to. I had to I had you had to, to, you had to do some stuff as we describe as dad stuff. Yeah, dad stuff. All right, guys. Well, this is coming to the end of the podcast, and you know what that means. It is our two-minute warning. This is where we kind of go over all the stuff that we don't want to put into the podcast to bog it down, like sponsors for me and stuff like that. Nick goes a little bit preacher mode and uh, hooks everybody up for the rest of the for the rest of the weekend and everything. So let's get right into it. The two-minute warning starts right now. If you're a gamer looking for a gaming org, or you're a comp player trying to trying to be a part of a team. Look no further than Witch Doctor GG on Twitter. Go to Witch Doctor GG and fill out an application on their website. Join the Shaman Squad. Love it here. Come and hang out every single day uh, on my Twitch channel, twitch.tv backslash snipes underscore US. Uh, I've been lackluster this week because I've been just playing solo player games and those are boring to stream sometimes. Also, join us every single week for the podcast, normally on Thursdays, but sometimes Fridays. Join us every week for the podcast. Finally, I have a few sponsors to shout out. CinchGaming.com. Use code SNIPES, S-N-I-P-E-S-S. They make quality uh, controllers with these back buttons. Uh, mine are bound to A and B. I have like nine controllers for some reason. Um, I, I, I used to have an addiction that I've gotten over. Also, go over to AltCustoms.com and use code SNIPES. They, give us the, they have these awesome 60% keyboards. Uh, I absolutely love it. And also, my other sponsor, that, which is new to the podcast this week, is bracelets.gg they come they have these awesome bracelets i've been wearing mine all podcasts i'm sure you've seen it this one's the red one i kind of did to match my whole setup and everything 
Use code SNIPES there, all lowercase, S-N-I-P-E-S-S, -S, all lowercase for your 5% off discount code on all three of those websites. All right, Nick. John, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write a little, you're going to see a story here today. Love this. About not giving up, John. Do you know, do you know a man by the name of Jimmy Donaldson? No. I, cause I think you do, John. That's, that's where, but you don't know him as Jimmy Donaldson. You know him as Mr. Beast, John. Uh, oh God, okay. Seven years ago today, Mr. Beast hit a thousand subscribers on YouTube. He tweeted that out. I saw that while we were doing our pod, cause Twitter was open. I go, all right, and I planted in my mind that I'm making this motivational story, John. Jimmy Donaldson. It was Mr. Beast, right? Yeah. Se uh, seven years ago, a thousand subs. Now, fifty nine point six million subs and climbing, John. Wow. You ready to hear his? You ready to hear his views from his last uh, like ten videos? Thirty mil, thirty nine mil, sixty seven mil, forty three mil, thirty seven mil, thirty two mil, fifty three mil, forty three mil, forty six mil, thirty seven mil, fifty six mil, sixty mil. John, he has not gone under thirty million views since six months ago when he got twenty seven million views. Wow. And now that man has a net worth of an estimated $16 million, but I guarantee you it's not even that high because he's out here slinging, slashing. I think he was bankrupt at one point last year during COVID. Wow. This man. All right, hit me. Well, you never give up. Hit me, Nick. Yeah, that hit you it. with what? You know what? <clears throat> the Rocky. Yeah, I get it now. Sorry, I was really confused. You do this every John. podcast. How are you? It doesn't matter how hard you get hit. It matters how hard you can get hit and you can keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward because that's how winning is done. Rocky Balboa. Thank, thank you. All right, everybody, join us next week on the podcast. We're probably going to talk some crazy stuff, and I'll probably make garbage predictions that will definitely be wrong. So tune in. Uh, next week I plan to talk about CW versus Marvel. Um, because CW is releasing a bunch of shows and Marvel's kind of doing the same thing right now uh, that, that are going to tie them into movies and stuff like that for Marvel. But uh, So we plan on talking about that next week. So join us next week. We'll see you guys later. This is your boy Snipes. Thanks for joining the podcast, everyone.